everybody and welcome to this third and final session on dimensions of food. Am I audible uh, Sonia or Anandi? Good, all right. Annam Parabrahmam Swarupam. Thanks Anandi and friends who have made this chant designed this chant such beautiful good i hope everybody is doing well wherever you are and looking at food little differently since the last two sessions good so we'll keep the same format during the satsang if there are any thoughts any questions any uh, clarity that you seek uh, please write it in the chat in between I'll take a look at the chat box and talk about or address some of those things yeah so last two sessions we've talked about um, lots of different dimensions of food and how food affects us how food makes us who we are and especially for meditators and seekers the the significance of food and how in the ancient systems how we've always said food as the annamaya kosha the the body that we identify with the most is called the food body there's a reason it's called the food body because everything that we consume everything that we eat directly impacts our thought process and how we behave or feel in our body mind composition so taking that dialogue a little more forward we wanted to end it in the last session but I felt there are some few more important points that needs to be talked about so before we enter into that there are a few questions that I've received so let me first talk on that and I thought these are important questions so a friend has asked that Many nutritionists recommend that we should eat small meals every 2-3 hours. So in this case she is asked that there is no uh, feeling of hunger because if you are eating every 2-3 hours you are not allowing yourself to reach up to the hunger level. And the reason she said the nutritionist give is that if you eat big chunks then you know it becomes fat you don't want to look fat <laughs> so the nutritionist suggests that we eat smaller portion every two three hours so she's asked what's my view on that and how do we look at it you know in the sadhana traditions yeah i thought this is important because 
I hear a lot of uh, people have started following this kind of eating regime. Yeah. So I thought it, let's talk about it. So if you really look at it, if you're eating every two three hours, the question is: Are we born to eat? Are we just born to eat? Because if you're eating every two three hours, then the whole day you're eating. If you look at a small baby infant, an infant eats or feels hunger every two three hours because. Infant needs to eat every 2-3 hours because the belly is small and the body is growing. Infant is in the growth process, is in the growth phase of body-mind and the bellies are small. But look at our own selves. Are we body, in, a, in the body-mind composition, are we in the growth phase or are we in the maintenance phase? Uh, is the body more growing? Are we gaining more, more height, etc.? No, we're probably gaining more weight. <laughs> yeah. So we, as adults, are in the maintenance mode, not in the growing mode. Mm. And infants' belly is small. Our bellies are pretty large. <laughs> yeah. So, eating two, three hours, and maybe the nutritionist suggests that. Because they observe that these days, you know, we stuff ourselves too much and then there's a new trend of snacking. So, we keep snacking throughout the day. So, maybe because of that, they suggested that, you know, keep eat after every two, three hours and keep your portions small. Yeah. But if you look at it traditionally or historically, and I, I see that even in the villages around where I live. You know, people, the villagers who work hard on the farms or tend to their uh, cattle, they are very busy people. They don't have the luxury of eating all the day, every two, three hours. They are the most healthy people. They don't have the luxury of keep eating every two, three hours. They would usually eat just two meals a day. One in the morning before they go out of their homes to work and second in the evening, once they come back after work, two meals and no snacking in between. They are the most healthy people. Yeah. Because of the fact that, you know, when somebody tells you to eat every two, three hours, and else you will start to gain weight or accumulate a lot of fat. The entire process of eating becomes very caution, very fearful. We have added the energy of fear into what we are eating instead of enjoying what we are eating. Yeah? So, that is one component. Think about it. The second component, if your issue is accumulation of fat, then it is not that you should eat every 2-3 hours, it is that you should watch out what you are eating. Probably you are eating way too much for your maintenance mode. Remember this. As adults, your bodies are in the maintenance mode, not in the growth phase. So, if you are eating a lot of fat, even if you divide it into small portions and eat every 2-3 hours or one large meal but a lot of fat, the beauty of fat is your body needs fat. It is a storehouse of energy. Yeah. But the store of, ener of energy can only be consumed if you feel hunger. But if you keep eating every few hours, there is no hunger. This accumulated storehouse is not getting released. Mm. So, look at your lifestyles. Your diet should be in accordance with your daily activities, with your lifestyle. Mm. I often see that people who, who work at the farms, for an example, they should actually eat the diet that you are eating. And you should probably eat the diet which they are eating because they are eating very sattvic, very raw diet, plant based diet largely. Here I am talking about India. And we are eating a lot of cheese, lot of fat, lot of you know, I do not know, a uh, lot of sugar. And our daily activities are dinacharya 
the way we are conducting our life is not in accordance with that kind of diet hence the diet the food that we eat start to make us sick because we said you must only eat that kind of food which corresponds to the kind of daily activities or the lifestyle that you are leading but as i said i think in the last satsang or before that we eat because of compulsion we eat because of social convention we eat because a certain tradition of let's say processed food has taken over hmm? we're not really thinking we're not really conscious of what is it that our body needs based on the kind of activities we are engaged in if my whole day is in a desk job very limited physical activity then my diet needs to be accordingly then i can't afford to eat lot of junk lot of you know grease lot of processed foods no that will make me sick yeah so think wisely and unless there is a specific body condition that you have because of which the doctor is recommending you to eat every 2 3 hours which is a different matter altogether but as a matter of as a matter of your discipline i don't recommend that discipline yeah in fact what we recommend is you should eat 3/4 of your stomach full leave 1/4 space yeah it's all about your behavior your attitude towards food yeah it's all about that in fact they say that you should only eat uh, uh, two third of your stomach leave one third space empty i'm saying okay let's take it a little forward leave one fourth space empty at least yeah and especially once you're touching 40 and beyond that your body is more in the maintenance mode two meals a day two healthy meals a day should suffice yeah but of course watch out your lifestyle watch out your body composition yeah? but traditionally i have seen that we've always as humanity we've always had something like two meals a day only we couldn't afford luxury of sitting and eating you know every three times a day or four times a day who had the time for that or who had the resources for that you know starting from the hunter gatherers they probably ate just once a day yeah think about it yeah so i thought i thought this is important and uh, last thing on this uh, on this question is no actually two more points because i think the friend who asked has this thing about you know accumulating fat so i would say you usually accumulate fat you meaning people we all accumulate fat because of a poor digestion two lethargic lifestyle three a diet which is not suitable for our lifestyle that's the combination of these three is what makes us accumulate a lot of fat yeah so focus on these three and and come in in harmony and rhythm yeah and always remember we are supposed to consume food for our well being do not allow food to consume you <laughs> yeah because if you if you don't pay attention to that soon the food will start to consume you and that's what is happening which we call the lifestyle diseases it's that the food has started consuming us <laughs> instead of we consuming the food yeah think about this yeah there's another question a friend has asked uh, and then we'll proceed and she's asked <clears throat> should we only eat when our stomach rumbles regardless of time of the day if you are fasting but still don't have the absolute hunger in that time should we wait i would say absolutely come in tune with nature come in tune with your own bodies as sadhak as meditators as yogis as seekers we are completely out of tune with a our own bodies and then with this entire natural cycles we are out of tune yeah you know everybody recommends and since the ancient time this has been the process that the evening meal we eat before the sun sets then we connected it with the religion but actually there is no religious phenomena behind it it's a very scientific thing because sun is what uh, energizes your jatha agni 
Agni is fire. Jathar Agni is the fire in your belly. The digestive fire in the belly. Your digestive fire in the belly is directly connected to the solar energy, the sun, the presence of sun. The presence of sun uh, makes this Jathar Agni, the, the digestive fire, strong. As the sun sets, the digestive fire weakens. As the night falls, the digestive fire weakens more. So, as a scientific tradition, we said that you know, eat before the sunset. This is like following the wisdom of your own bodies and the wisdom of the nature. But we are absolutely out of tune of that. And then we pay the consequences of price. So, to this friend, I would say absolutely watch your hunger. If you're fasting or if you're not fasting, whatever the case, you must eat when you're hungry. That's the law or that's the yardstick that you should use. That's the ritual that you should make. That unless there is hunger, you won't eat. Now the question arises, then maybe my meal times will be haywire during the day. Yeah. There's a possibility of that for sure. If you've eaten a huge meal in the morning, first thing in the morning, then you will probably not feel hunger for another seven hours or six hours. Yeah. So your your lunch time might be skipped. But then that's how the body's wisdom is working. Body is actually telling you that because you ate a very heavy meal, you probably do not need need lunch right now. Yeah. So as you start to follow the wisdom of hunger, I call it. Mark this word, the wisdom of hunger. Hunger teaches you a lot of wisdom. So, watch this wisdom of hunger. Come in tune with this wisdom of hunger. And the beauty of this wisdom of hunger is that this wisdom will connect you to the wisdom of nature. Soon you will start to see that the meal timings which have gone haywire, for an example, slowly they will start to come in tandem. And if you observe carefully, they will start to come in tandem with the natural rhythm. So, in a, in a matter of two to three months, you will observe that your food timings are absolutely mapping with the rhythm of nature. The wisdom of hunger is guiding your, your eating habits. And this wisdom of hunger is also telling you what to eat, how much to eat. Because you have taken the first step of listening to the body. Hunger is a call of the body, you know, it's like we identify ourselves with this, you know, this form. If I look in the mirror, I, I identify with this, that yes, this is the form that I have, this is who I am. Without going into the, you know, philosophy saying that no, no, I am not the form, etc. <laughs> At the very base practical level, when I look into the mirror, you identify yourself with the form, with, with the body. But are you talking to your body? Are you listening to that? Are you friends with your own body? Are you paying attention to that? No, most of the time we are not listening to it. And hunger is a call of the body. It's, the bo it's like body is telling, trying to communicate to you. Yeah, but probably we are not even giving that chance to the body huh? to speak. Imagine you are living with a partner or, or a friend and that partner feeds you so much or loves you so much or I don't know, pours so much on you that you don't even get a chance to express. <laughs> yeah, because you have been stuffed a lot all the time. Will you feel very nurtured, elated or will you start to feel suffocating? Yeah. So that's your relationship with the body. Your bodies are wanting to communicate to you, but we, we keep stuffing it. We're not giving it a chance to talk, to speak, to communicate. Yeah. So this, as you start to listen to this wisdom of hunger, the body clock or the eating clock will start to come in tandem with the natural clock. It's a phenomenal process. If you do it for three months, you will see 
yes the schedules will go haywire in the beginning but soon they will start to harmonize yeah. it will actually become very difficult for you to eat after sunset yeah. if i would say try it experiment with this yeah and see the body's wisdom is really deep yeah okay so so these were the two questions i thought will begin the session with now few things about the food for this session i think one of the things that that i have observed is that we do not look at food holistically we look at food in a very narrow way just something uh, which i am deriving a lot of pleasure from that's it yeah it's a very narrow view of the food but if you really observe friends if you really look at a plate of food in your hand on your table one of the fundamental thing about food is food is about connections food is about connections in one plate full of food is entire cosmos residing sitting there for you to consume entire cosmos the rice that's it, that's there in your in your plate the sun has poured its blessing on this rice sunlight the water has nurtured this rice the winds the bees everybody has played a role in this grain of rice the earth has allowed this rice to to come out of its womb it's grain of rice we talking about the farmer the farmer's family who who cultivated this rice the farmer's cattle you know if they if they if they use cattle yeah the manure from the cattle is gone into this rice the people who who have taken this rice to the to the mills their families who are dependent on them for their livelihood for the food for the meal the people who are working in these mills and factories then the people who carried this sack of rice on their backs or on their machines in the west largely then the people who uh, stocked it in the shelves they touched this rice a part of them has gone into it maybe the rice that you're consuming or the millet that you're consuming was grown in you know 500 miles away from where you live or where you consuming it the truck driver who's got this food from the source to the shop this one grain of rice has all the cosmic connections ingrained into it so actually when you look at your plate just observe the food in your plate you can have the darshan you can have the have the have the sight of entire cosmos in that plate the suddenly the rice will no more be rice that you consuming suddenly it will feel like a cosmos that i'm i'm going to consume this cosmos i'm going to consume the effort and sweat of so many people in a good way i'm saying who made sure that you know this food remains um uh, fresh and healthy yeah so food is connections food is just not to satiate the hunger or uh gain a certain nutritive value out of it food is a phenomena friends food is just not substance huh? just not an object that you know just not just not a thing that i consume food is a phenomena food is a cosmic phenomena on earth in your plate huh? yeah it's all about developing the eye developing this eye to see that food in this perspective 
and life is all about these perspective because the moment you start to look at food from this perspective your plate from this cosmic perspective a different layer of sensitivity opens up friends remember why we're talking about this as part of sadhana as part of inner journey food is part of your inner journey it is a very strong component you know i often uh, share with friends that there are three things which are very important for a sadhak to work on extremely important for every sadhak to work on these three elements and in some element one is higher in some element two is higher in some element three is higher first element and there is no order per se but first element which a sadhak needs to work on work with i would say is food childhood conditioning childhood conditioning since the day you were born this conditioning has started second layer which a sadhak needs to work on is sex very powerful natural force but not as powerful as food because food is starting from the day you breath the first breath that you took sex came little later you know 15 years later let's say it has it it has less conditioning than the food in a way and the third element is sleep you know nidra sleep is the third element which every meditator should work with so these are the three key components the beauty is if you are able to work with one component the other two starts to come in your control or start to get resolved or you start to make um um a connection and a, a beautiful connection with the other two the other two then also becomes a source of evolution and exploration yeah and i have observed that food still in my understanding working with so many friends food still remains number one because childhood conditioning because traditional conditioning because cultural conditioning yeah because societal conditioning so on so forth yeah so if the attitude towards food starts to change if i start to look at the whole cosmos in my plate as a sadhak as a meditator i have touched a very deeper layer within my being i have opened something which was closed for you know years together a different level of sensitivity starts to emerge in me i start to uh, i start to receive different aspect different dimensions of the same food that i'm eating yeah so we're talking about connections and sensitivity so let me talk little bit about sensitivity because for a meditator you know sensitivity is the key if you're not sensitive towards your own self towards your body mind towards the way world is sadhana is going to be difficult so sensitivity is a very fundamental beautiful key so sensitivity about food now i'm going to bring in a different aspect now from the sensitivity perspective here do you know in uk the amount of food which is wasted every year yeah i'll come to india also <laughs> yeah the amount of food that is that is um that is wasted in uk every year is 16 million tons now that's just a number right but to give you a, another aspect 60% of the food that is produced or that comes to uk 60% of that food is wasted even before it comes to the shelves 60% of the food is wasted india 40% of the food which this country produces is wasted 40% yeah and uh, 190 million people in this country starve or malnutrition they don't get enough food 190 million people 
India waste as much food as the UK consumes. Hmm? Sensitivity about food. It seems that more than the production economy, we have become a waste economy. And across the world, on this earth, all the food that is produced, 50 percent of that is wasted. Yeah, 50 percent of the food that the earth produces is wasted and large part of that is wasted during uh, you know in, in the in the transit storehouses and then there are these millions of people across the globe who starve themselves to death sensitivity about food if you become sensitive you know then all of this is your family yeah and we have each one of us can play a role in this each one of us can play a role in this we can think about it to each his own you know i think this this catastrophic event of 50% food wastage on earth happens because everything is relied to we, we rely for our food on the big corporations. We do not have connect with the farmer. I said food is all about connections. Something which is making my body and mind, I do not have connection with that or with the people who are producing that. We have no connection with the farmer. If you start to or if you take a decision that from today onwards I will only procure from the local farmer, this dimension changes. The food will start to taste and behave very differently in your body. Yeah, These are energetic phenomena. The same tomatoes will behave very different in your bodies if you know the source, the people who have produced that, if you are friends with them. If there is a connection, relationship established, everything changes, everything changes. Connection or this relationship or this sensitivity changes the quality of everything on earth. Yeah? Let me share a small story. I have shared this story with some of you earlier, but I thought this is a very beautiful story. So let me share that again about connection, relationship and how it changes the quality of everything. So the story goes that there is a wise man who dies and the Yama, Yama is the, the god of death comes to take him. Take him to, because this person who has died is a wise man, is a meditator. So the Yama, the God of Death says, Sir, you have been a good man. I give you two choices. Usually I do not give this choice to anybody, but I give you a choice. Do you want to take, go to heaven or hell? Suddenly this wise man thought that he has also heard a lot of things about, a lot of good things about hell. So he said, that based on my karma, I should basically go to heaven. But since you are offering me a choice, I want to take a look at hell also, just to see firsthand how does it feel in hell. Sure, the Yama, the god of death, takes this wise man to the hell. At the doors, at the boundary of the hell, he says, peep in, look in. You can't go in, but you can look it from a distance. Sure. So he looks from the, from the distance the scene in the hell and the scene in the hell is the tables are laid with phenomenal amount of food everything everything that you can think about eating everything that you've ever dreamt about eating everything that you've ever dreamt about which will give you pleasure of eating everything is laid out on the tables scene changes looks in the other direction. 
the food which is so nicely decorated laid down on the other side scene two the food is in mess the same food he looks closely and sees that all the people in hell what they've done they've tied their arms yeah can you can you see it in the screen like this so this is my arm so they put a rod here and tied the arm so the arm cannot bend yeah so it's a straight arm now everybody has straight arms like this i don't know if you're able to see it in the screen like straight arms so with the straight arms they go they pick the pour the food in their table uh, you know, from the table on the plates they come to the eating area but because the arms are straight they can't fold it how, how would they eat it so sometime they try to you know uh, uh, put the contents you know flap the contents in the air to eat it sometime they try to eat it with their mouth directly on the plate mess total mess ugly scene there with the beautiful food the ugly scene still a lot of people are not able to eat because they just can't you know how would they get the food to the they can't even bring the plate closer because the arms would not fold he's seen that he asked the god of death all right sir i've seen it let's go to the heaven sure goes to the heaven at the gate same food laid down beautifully everything that you've ever wished to eat in your life everything is laid down beautifully then he sees these people walking towards food but he's shocked because these people walking towards food to you know get food uh, on the plates they also have their arms tied the rod and the arms tied they even can't fold their arms now he's perplexed he said same scene in in hell and the same scene in heaven and he's sure that when he looks at the eating area it is going to be a mess the way it was in hell so scene changes he looks at the eating area so all the people with their you know straight hands they pour food on the plates and then they go to the eating area keeps their plates down but he observes there nobody is eating for himself or herself like this no everybody is feeding the other arms are straight i can't feed myself but i can feed you so in the heaven everybody is feeding the other and they are all enjoying they are all enjoying this mutual connection they are all enjoying this relationship which they have established with each other and with the food it this connection and this relationship has changed the quality of life from heaven to hell where everything actually is the same same food same arms tied everything is the same but the quality or the attitude of connections and relationship has changed the life experience or death experience i don't know <laughs> what should we call because they have died so maybe it's changed their experience of being in that place where everything is the same yeah so i thought it's a very beautiful story the story tells us that the perception the relationship with the food if that starts to change if you start to form a deeper connection with food and the cosmos in your plate and the people who are growing it everything about food everything about how you relate with food maybe everything will change the way your body's react to that food the way you take take nutrition out of that food everything will change yeah like in the last satsang we talked about how do you purify food you purify food by offering it to the divine you purify food by sharing it with other people you purify food by by uh, donating it you purify food by chanting certain mantras before you partake the food what are you doing through all these processes nothing you just basically establishing a connection a relationship a deeper 
connect a sacred connect with the food that's all you're doing through these processes isn't it yeah think about it think about it yeah let me take a quick look at the chat if there are any but before i look at that i want to remind you again the statement that i read from the rig vedas the ancient spiritual text on earth the most ancient about food the statement says from rig veda i speak the truth it is indeed his death he who nourishes neither the god nor a friend he who eats alone gathers inauspicious or bad karmas for his life he who eats alone he who doesn't offer it to the divine or to the friends rig veda yeah while you contemplate on it let me quickly look at uh, some of the chat or comments if there are any yeah yeah okay so then there's no there's no question there are a few comments it's for everybody you can all read it yeah my only request to friends you to those friends who are profile reads something like a zoom user or iphone it'll be nice to uh, if you can change your profile name so that you know we can have a better connect <laughs> via the name also yeah okay um okay time okay it's also important let's move to the next segment i want to talk about very quickly a what of the food you know what should we eat though i touched upon this briefly but i want to talk about that i want to give you an analogy have you observed i'm sure you have athletes runners or sportsmen sports people athletes athletes have a very specific diet they eat very specific kind of food weightlifters very specific kind of food they are very conscious of what they eat because what they eat directly impacts their performance because what they eat then they know it better than us probably that what they eat they become that <laughs> athletes know that their trainers know that that whatever this athlete will eat he will become that and food will directly impact the performance so they've designed or defined what they consume in a very certain way they eat a specific diet yeah another analogy if let's say um you have a sports car you know v8 engine it's a petrol v8 engine you can't put diesel in that can you no you can't because it will kill the performance of the sports car or probably seize the engine also because petrol or diesel or this fuel is food for the car wrong kind of food if you put it will destroy the engine hello what are we putting in our engines think about it can you put the regular vehicle petrol in the aeroplane the jets no you cannot because the requirement the performance requirement of a jet plane is very different than your car because jet plane will also go into the minus temperature zones if you put normal petrol it will freeze minus 40 degree it can't sustain so you need specific different kind of fuel for that plane what am i hinting towards i'm hinting towards is that whatever you want to do with your body mind and i'm using the term body mind because both are deeply interconnected they are basically one only yeah anyway we'll not go into the details of that whatever you want to do with your body mind if the fuel is not 
uh, appropriate for that, its functions will be uh, hampered badly. Now, what do we want to do with this body mind? Who we are? All, all the friends on this, on this session today. We are trying to build a certain awareness. We, we are on an evolutionary process, conscious evolutionary process. Yeah, willingly. There's a conscious evolutionary process is happening in entire existence, unwillingly, unknowingly. But a meditator want to fasten that process. So we all are uh, fastening our evolutionary, conscious evolutionary process by bringing our chetana, our wisdom, our awareness into it. We want to build a meditative life. We want to build a life or we want to experience life in its multiple dimensions. We want to expand our sense of perceptions infinitely so that this entire world becomes me, Aham Brahmasami, I am the Brahma, so that we can experience that. So that we, we can experience the subtle subtle phenomena of life which are even beyond the five senses touch smell taste hearing and all of that we want to experience life which is infra you know like uh, the the light has a range we can only see light through our uh, visual sense we can only see light in a certain range we can only hear sounds in a certain range there are lights and sounds below that and higher that. Yeah, the infra, and I don't know what the other term is called. Anyway, that's not coming right now. Yeah, so there are ranges which are beyond our sensory perceptions. We want to, we want to expand our perception to such an extent, such a degree that we can absorb, get connected, feel, sense all of that yeah one second i think so. ultra yes thanks akshay yeah infra and ultra, ultra ranges yeah we want to be in the center we don't want to be swayed by the forces of life by the attachments and repulsions of life we don't want to be swayed we want to be centered we want to develop this equanimity this ananda, this joyfulness, this meditative joyfulness. That's the process, that's the journey we are all on. So we are on a specific journey. Like that athlete, like that aeroplane, like that sports car, our fuel also needs to be very well thought of, very well designed. We need to put a lot of conscious understanding into what we consume. If an, ad, if an athlete knows his food, what he should eat and what he should not eat, shouldn't a meditator also do the same thing? Shouldn't a meditator should also be very conscious about, you know, what to eat, what not to eat? Yeah, because it plays a very important role. We are, we are wanting a very different performance from this body-mind. Like an athlete, we are also wanting a very different level of performance, maybe very higher performance even than an athlete. We want very different from this body-mind, yeah? from a perception, experience perspective. Hence, we need to pay deep attention to what we eat. So far in the, in the dialogue we've talked about probably how to eat, our behavior, attitude towards that. Now I'm coming to the what of that. What to eat? You know, in the in the Eastern tradition in India, we've we've categorized food into three broad segments based on the energies. There's a sattvic food, there's rajasic food, there's tamasic food, three kinds of food. Let me uh, go little in detail of that. As pure conscious meditative beings, what are we trying to do again? We are trying to build more sattva. Sattva is the quality of settledness, the quality of equanimity, the quality of being in the middle, the quality of not swaying. That's the quality called sattva. What is the sattvic 
what is the sattvic food then sattvic food is that is extremely light on your system first two which is extremely pure not infested by chemicals natural organic extremely pure sattvic food which is made hygienically sattvic food which is as fresh as it can be as closer to nature as it can be which doesn't travel thousands of miles to come to my home sattva the simplest possible food which i can access the food that causes much less violence because everything that we do causes some violence plucking a leaf spinach leaf causes violence to the plant yeah but sattvic food is that which causes much less violence it's like beyond that is impossible for us to survive so that level of violence we have to create huh? so plant based because the the least amount of violence in that that is what is called sattvic food extremely extremely as i said gentle and uh, uh, light on my body mind sattvic food also has a quality that it is not in extremes which means its fragrance is not extreme its taste is not extreme its flavor is not extreme yeah it's a very centered food to take an example let's say garlic yeah, and i'm not i'm not giving you any don'ts and do's or don't say about food huh? don't get me wrong i'm just taking some examples to each his or her own yeah, i'm sharing some thoughts with you contemplate on that and see what suits you most in your meditative journey yeah but i'm drawing from the ancient wisdom here also you can choose to take some inputs from there so like garlic just an example garlic is very medicinal plant if you need to take it as a medicine brilliant because it it helps greatly in digestion and so on so on but otherwise if you look at garlic very strong smell very strong taste it it falls in this extreme segment hence by definition it would not fall into the sattvic food zone right however some of these foods are very medicinal so one must take them for the medicinal value yeah the point i'm trying to make is the sattvic food is a very centered very not high in not high in something not low in something very centered so sattvic rajasic food what is rajas the energy of rajas is too much aggravation too much action too much doing that's called rajas nowhere i'm saying that these energy rajas or tamas or anything is is not right or bad no i'm just explaining them rajas so lot of action orientation ness lot of aggression so soldiers who are fighting needs a lot of rajasic food so what is rajasic food rajasic food is lot of spices for an example yeah uh, a lot of strong smells what happens when you eat lot of spices uh, your system is charged coffee strong cup of coffee what does it do wakes you up rajas rajas is the energy of waking up so all the foods which which charges the system suddenly like that suddenly is the word even sattvic food charges you it gives you energy for momentum but rajasic food is like boom here you eat and boom you awake the cup of coffee or tea for that matter rajasic food if you are 
performing certain tasks as your life processes which needs a lot of action a lot of rajasic energy you need some level of rajasic diet also but think for yourself do you want to consume the rajasic diet all the time think about it yeah you are in a, on a meditative process where you are also wanting to develop some sattva energy so how much rajasic food you want to consume think about it so a lot of foods which are very rich are categorized are put into the rajasic categories hmm? tamasic food the food which does not have any nutritive value when i'm saying does not have any nutritive value i mean it's very low on nutritive value hmm? junk food food that makes me lethargic Huh? so all the processed foods all the oily food heavy fat foods makes you lethargic tamas is the energy of lethargy stale food you've cooked 3 days ago put it in the fridge and then you microwave it and eat it tamas sick food it's there's no freshness in it remember in the satvik food i said it's a fresh food so tamasic food is let's say you you get those frozen something from the market and then you heat it up now that food was made 2 months ago huh? frozen then they froze it then you bought it and then now you warm it or whatever heat it and eat it tamasic food not fresh and the food as i said which is very low on its nutritive its energy its yeah its nutritive value let's say so if you look at most of the junk food is only high in uh, let's say fats and sugars and salts but apart from that if you look at their vitamin values their mineral values their you know uh, the nutritive things it's it's very low on that so all that kind of food falls in the tamasic category which means if you consume that kind of food a lot it will dull your system it will dull your energies it will not uh, be supportive in your sadhana because the food that you're eating is dull, dulling your energies all the time how would you sit and meditate you'll sleep so lots of people who experience by the way lots of people who experience sleepiness when they sit for meditation and i know a lot lots of people who experience that they'll sit for meditation in 10 15 minutes it's like you know <laughs> they're becoming drowsy what needs to be looked at food you consuming uh lots of tamasic food or maybe you're consuming satvic food but in unproportional quantities <laughs> because even if you're eating simple food but you're eating you know more than what you need what your body needs even the satvik food will become tamasic food do you, do you follow the quantity will change the quality of the food that's the reason i sometimes tell to the friends it's all right to consume tamasic or rajasic food rajasic is is not that bad but let's say tamasic food it's all right to consume tamasic food for its taste for for social convention or for whatever but just a bite just this much hmm? don't become suddenly too hard on your own self consume tamasic food that's all right but it's like out of your daily intake if it's just about 3 to 5 percent it's all right because a day will come when that too will get dropped from your system you will not feel like even having that but till that time don't become just too hard on yourself it's all right to consume small quantities yeah we'll take a quick break um one second i think my batteries are going down one second my laptop battery is not my batteries <laughs> Okay I'll take a quick minute to look at if there is any thing that we need to 
Okay, good. Good. So, having said that about Satvik, Rajasik and Tamasik food, I want to read out a statement to you before we end this session. There is a great being which happened in India, we call, we call him Manu. Manu is called, uh, you can call him the, the first man or you can call him the, um, the ancient wise man, I don't know how, how to define that. But he is considered as a very wise man who is laid down a lot of uh, wisdom thoughts for the whole of humanity. Uh, we are talking about like, so this entered into the mythology realm. However, Manu said some, something beautiful, so I want to read two lines about what he said on food. This, if this happened, if Manu was really a person, then we are talking about some, you know, 10,000 years ago or something like that, yeah. And it is written in our ancient scriptures in the Vedas, yeah. So let me read that out. Manu says, Food that is always worshipped, food that is always worshipped gives strength and vigour. But eaten irrelevantly, eaten without that, it destroys them both. So if the food is not worshipped, eaten without that, it destroys the strength and the vigour. That's what Manu says. Then he says, eating therefore, like any other human activity, can be made into a sacred process. I thought this is really important. Eating therefore like any other human activity can be made into a sacred act which can create a way for liberation. But if food is not a sacred act, then it becomes a source of bondage and suffering. I thought that's very profound. Manu is saying that if the food is not eaten with the attitude of sacredness or worshipfulness or gratitude, then the food becomes a source of suffering, pain and entanglement. And the food, if eaten with a lot of sacredness and worshipfulness and gratitude, becomes a source of liberation. That's the power and profoundity of food that we eat few times a day friends the cosmos in our plate yeah with that um, we've come to the end of this dialogue series friends um, it's such a topic such a subject that is still a lot more to share understand talk about but i think for this series probably this should suffice. I request all of you, I recommend all of you to really start to work with food, with your own attitude towards food and see what it does to your sadhana, your meditativeness. Yeah. So before we enter into the, into the darshan, uh, I mean we can do that parallelly. So I request all of you to kindly open your video views. Um, there are few words that I want to share. Uh, like really words uh, to simplify everything that we've talked about so far first is local eat or procure as much local as you can second seasonal eat whatever is seasonally available three plant-based is really good yeah as much as plant-based which is unprocessed Plant-based can also be processed or unprocessed, yeah. So non-processed, fresh, plant-based, pure, which means uh, no chemicals, less commercialization. So if you can directly procure from the local farmer's market, all the more good, yeah, pure. Uh, sharing, share food as much as you can. It does something magical. Next is gratitude, so the cosmos in the plate, feel the gratitude for the farmer, for all the people who've, who've helped you get that food. And lastly sacredness, food is a 
sacred phenomena food is not a substance food is a very sacred phenomena so with that um, let me just change the view here I uh, request all of you to please open your videos such a beautiful moment wow thank you everybody thanks for part for being part of this thank you neil for background support thank you karan good to see you archana thank you very much noelia namaste vaniza namaste vaniza steven steffy there namaste namaste friends debi namaste namaste nidhi my friend deepak there namaste deepak akshay will meet soon akshay namaste we have uh, hamsa namaste hamsa hamsa i hope hamsa you know the meaning of hamsa yeah i'm sure you you do yeah beautiful that's a beautiful name hamsa namaste vijay ji namaste christiana and ninian there yeah beautiful seeing you my parents from delhi namaste parents yeah atul namaste good to see you atul tarun so good to see you so good to see you we have some more friends uh, shivani rushender lucy mamta abhinav uh, we have aryan we have avtar ji there namaste avtar ji um uh, we have tatiana and martin there so good to see you both so beautiful to see you both we have silvia there namaste silvia uh, i hope i have not missed anybody oh i have actually i'm so sorry the screens keep flipping huh? <laughs> thank you sonia for all your help and support uh, thank you another friend i can't read the name iphone says um, thank you anandi thank you pramod ji sorry ross so oh, namaste namaste ross namaste yeah pramod ji and maria our friends they are so good to see you both so beautiful to see you both whips so good to happy to see you yeah daisy namaste daisy martha so lovely to see you martha so happy to see you sonal sarabdeep namaste sarabdeep very happy to see you again param ji and sarab ji there namaste namaste param ji so happy to see you all friends it's been a pleasure the next satsang series probably will start in from second week of uh, october if i'm not wrong it will probably be a three part series it's a very important season that we are entering into next month on what is the season season of devi the shakti uh, it's the first time i want to talk to all of you about the shakti element the the feminine element of life so we'll have series of three satsangs on shakti uh, the next month is a season for shakti i'll talk more in detail about that when we start that uh, series you'll you'll get the schedule and dates very soon and till then because there's a gap of almost about two odd weeks in between or more i really want you to contemplate on the food things that we talked about and start to experiment if there are any things that come across if you feel any hindrance feel free to get in touch uh, and then we'll talk on that my love and blessings to all of you thank you very much namaste Thank you thank you anandi thank you
ब्रह्म